wanted to jump on real quick. Um, Christina Swords from Redefine Creatives is doing a YouTube hop on Star Wars or Disney inspired layouts. So I have um, this picture from Disney from my daughter. She, I think she's in first grade here. And I wanted to do a mixed media background for this along with a hybrid 6x6 pocket page of a bunch of pictures we took from Disney um, with her with princesses. So I created this mixed media layout from um, our New York trip and I thought I would scrap lift it and I'm thinking that I'm going to do it in a 12 by 12 and I'm going to turn it going this way and I'm going to have some mixed media coming across the middle of the page um, and then have um, the, the, the larger photo here. So I went in my stash and um, this is just a plain uh, white piece of paper. It's a little heavier. It's not thin, but it's not very thick either. So I'm going to have to gesso it. I'm going to use clear gesso. Um, I also have some modeling paste. There's a little bit of this left, so I want to use this up. Um, I, it's a light by Golden Gel Medium. Wait a second. Oh yeah, no, that's right. Um, and then um, I have this Vicky Booten. It's a acrylic gel. So I'm going to go online and watch some YouTube videos, see uh, how people use this. I think it's for gluing stuff down, but I'm not sure. As we uh, move along, we'll find out what that's for, and I'll let you know. And then I had this piece of lace sitting on my desk for a long time, and I thought that I would use it, um, and I didn't. I finally took it off my desk. As soon as I took it off my desk, I found, hey, maybe I could use this here. So my thought process is to show you real quick, is do something such as this. And then this I cut off of that piece of ribbon. I will glue this going across, do some mixed media going here. I'm going to, oh, I also found these. I found this in um, Tuesday morning, and I believe that this brings texture out and you can paint over it. So I thought that was a cool circular um, element that I could bring into the page, so we'll see. Um, and then I also have two keys left that I could use. Um, I don't know, the clock and the keys, they speak princess to me for some reason. And that, <clears throat> on my lift, I, ripped, I did some page ripping. Um, here and I'm thinking that I'm going to match that blue and I'm going to rip both sides here and here and then put that underneath so that's my process so far um, once I have it gessoed and then decide what colors I'm going to put to go across here I'll come back and share that with you my next part in my process is going to be putting some ink down I went into my stash to find um, what kind of media I wanted to use to put the color down on my paper. And I found these Magical uh, by Lindy Stamp Gang that I'm going to try. I'm going to try them on a, a scrap piece of paper first. But um, I figured that I could use, let's see, this is a Lucky Shamrock Green. Maybe a little bit of this Ramblin' Rose Pink. And then um, the Hydrangea Blue and then Sweet Violet Purple Teal. So these are powders and then mixed with water, they're supposed to give like a, I don't know, I don't wanna say iridescent, but like a water distressed look. So I thought that that would work out really well for this page. Um, and then I have this little spoon instead of trying to get the stuff out that I'll go ahead and I will either put in here and add water or I'm gonna put down on my page and then spray the water because I can spray it because I have the gesso, that my gesso has dried on it. So that's going to be um, my next step. So I've prepped the paper, I've torn it, I've put the gesso down. Now I'm going to add color to it and I'm going to practice off screen first. So here I am laying down the uh, mysticals, the powders, adding the water. I'm trying to move it around the page. I didn't have enough of the powder on, so I added more power powder. Then I added more water. And then I had like these runs that I didn't like. They were like legs coming out of the um, mixed media. It wasn't smooth how I wanted it. So I just kept working with it. I did turn off the camera because I got frustrated. But as I kept working with it and adding more to it, 
Um, the background turned out beautiful. Um, I wish I would have video all of it, but I didn't. Sorry, but you can see those runs there. They look awful, but the end result looks really good. So here I am. I'm putting uh, white gesso on my wood veneer. So my acrylic paint, when I painted it, I mixed black and white acrylic paint to, to make gray to go over the wood veneer. Um, that's going to be my title. And then that little round frame is going to be, I'm going to put the date in that on my page. Um, at the end of this process video, I'll show all the supplies that I used and kind of give you a brief overview of how I use them. And But um, right now we'll finish gessoing the wood veneer and then we'll get to my layout. Finished layout for the Christina Sorge Redefine Creative YouTube Hop. It was either uh, to scrap Star Wars or a Disney layout, which here is my Disney princess layout. And I want to kind of go over it a little bit, uh, my process, but at the end I will show you the products that I used uh, to create the page and how I use them. And I'll also put a video link down below in my comments. I watched this lady's video before I started it and it really did help me with the mixed media because I don't do mixed media that much. Uh, Missy Whitting's comment about just keep going until you find what you like in your mixed media. Um, as I was creating this, I was like, ah, Missy Whitting, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. But in the end, she was right. It came out beautiful, and I'm very happy with how it came out. So um, this netting I got from the Creative Cuts kit from Christina Sorge, and I thought that it went with the whole Aladdin jasmine feel. And this uh, lace was a remnant from my desk, and this is wood veneer from my stash. Um, and I'll go over the flowers. Very happy how it came out. Thank you, Christina, for gathering all of us together. And I can't wait to see what the other women have created. Um, so now I just kind of want to go over how I created the page. Uh, I tore the white paper and I used my Tim Holtz. You don't need a distressor. You can use scissors. You can use your fingers, uh, your fingernail to rip it or tear it. So, But I did use that. Uh, to spread my gesso, I just use these tools right here. They're plastic. They were pretty inexpensive. I think they were underneath a dollar, and I use those when I do mixed media. Uh, you can buy more expensive ones, but these work for me. Uh, clear gesso, Liquitex. I got that at our local craft store with a coupon, a 40% off coupon, so or 60%. Um, sometimes if you get lucky. Um, I did use the Magicals, and I got those from Lindy uh, Stamp Gang, um, which I did like those once I figured out how to work with them. Uh, brushing them on didn't work so well, but um, I did like using the water and spraying them around and moving them around the page. Then I came in with my Versafine ink, black, um, and I use the Versafine uh, because it is waterproof. If I did not have this fine script, I probably would have used my stays on. But since I did use this Honeydew Craft Script stamp, I used and this uh, Bow Bunny Distress Textured stamps, I did use the Versafine for both of them, even the Chicken Wire Fence one. So then after that dried, then I came in with my stencil which is a Delusions large stencil, and I just used this portion of it with uh, some light molding paste. So I used that, and then after I did that, I decided to go with a gray instead of the blue background. I'm not sure why I had this gray piece of paper out, and I thought, wow, that looked really good. So I used double-sided tape, and I adhered my white gessoed uh, paper to the gray. I backed my picture with the gray and then I wanted to like I said use the acrylic paint so I used some old gesso that I have laying around and I mixed black and white to get the gray um, and I adhered that with a Nouveau Deluxe adhesive so I put the adhesive on then I put two books on it and I let it sit overnight to, because you know, the paper's really hard once you start getting all this material and the mixed media on it. Um, it's hard for it to, to adhere. So I did that, and I, I put the two books on and let it overnight, and it was fine. Everything else I used, my fine line, my uh, Scotch quick-dry glue. Uh, then the flowers, I used 
Prima flowers. I used two of them, one here and one here. And then um, these are Petalou flowers. I got these from Tuesday morning, and I like the canvas. Once again, it gave the feel of uh, Princess Jasmine and Aladdin. And that was pretty much it. I mean, I think the mixed media was what took so long, and um, the flowers, um, I put a few on. I didn't want to do too much because, you know, I wanted the mixed media and the picture to stand out. Um, I also said that this was going to be a two-page layout, and this will be the other page. So basically what we're doing here is I'm going to have it this way. Um, and the reason why I did not do it this way, which normally I would have, is because on the other side of this uh, pocket page, I'm going to do the Bippity Boppity Boutique. So I'll have a two-page spread for that. Um, so this side, it'll be Bippity Boppity Boutique, a nice probably a mixed media page. I'll have the different pictures here and the story and then we'll flip it and then we'll have these two pages. So it'll be a four page layout for me. I hope you enjoyed my video, my process, um, and I hope you join me again soon. Bye.